Are you looking to spark new life into some of your favorite cocktails? Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you some inspiration to do exactly that. Now, whether you're a home bartender or you work behind a bar, making and serving up the same cocktails day in, day out can get a little bit tedious. And not only that, your customers and party guests will get a little bit bored if you're continually serving up the same things as well. Now, something that I love doing literally is one of my favorite things to do and that is to riff up famous cocktails. It's been a large part of the training and consultancy side of my business for the last eight to 10 years, and with good reason, because it gets good results. Quite often when I go into bars, bartenders will be trying to reinvent the wheel with their own creations, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Heck, even I do that here. But what I've proven time and time again is that if you put a simple twist on a famous cocktail, let's take the Woo Woo for example, if you put a twist on the woo-woo, I guarantee it, it will outsell any cocktail that a bartender has created on a cocktail menu. And it's that thing, people do like familiarity, but they will experiment if they can form some idea in their head of how that drink is going to taste like. And they're taking the woo-woo as an example, don't worry, we're not gonna cover woo-woos today, but taking the woo-woo as an example, most people know what a woo-woo tastes like. So if you see a cherry woo-woo or a strawberry woo-woo on a menu, of course, people are gonna try it because A, it's different, but B, they understand what the woo-woo is. And they may or may not be drinking a woo-woo right now. Who knows? So today in this video, I'm gonna take five famous rum cocktails. And all I'm gonna do is give you inspiration by swapping one simple ingredient. And that simple swap will create totally new beasts, which your customers and guests will absolutely love. Hello, Rum friends, welcome back. But for those of you that are new around these parts, hello and welcome. My name is Steve the Barman and right here on my main channel, it's mainly focused about rum education and fun rum experiments. So if that sounds like fun, make sure you hit that subscribe button. But if you wanna check out my five other YouTube channels, they will all be linked in the description below. So the first cocktail we're gonna attack is the Hurricane. One of my favorite easy cocktails to make, typically a three ingredient cocktail. I do make it with a fourth ingredient because I do love to add a touch of red color. So a bit of grenadine in there, kind of to mimic the old school fashionola that may or may not have been used in this recipe. So it's, Essentially, all it is, is your dark rum of choice, typically a stronger dark rum, but you can go 40% ABV. So I've got OFTD here. Uh, your passion fruit puree, we'll come onto this in a second, and your lemon juice. Okay, so they're your core ingredients. So my swap for this cocktail, is going to be the passion fruit. Now, uh, a lot of you in the UK will know that I do generically kind of use this. If you do use something like Funkin' Passion Fruit, you would typically kind of balance it out. So 50%, this is 90% uh, fruit in this pouch. So you would do like the whole 50-50 split. 50% 50, uh, 50 passion fruit, 50% uh, sugar syrup. It's what Martin Kate does in Smuggler's Cove. It's what Beach Band Berry calls for. It's a standard mix because that is unsweetened. So for those of you that kind of follow me and know these products here in the UK and around Europe, you'll know that that is an identical product to that that's already made. So that would be where, what I would use and the sort of sweetness levels you're talking about. So when we're thinking about that, easy swaps we could do, and I'm not going totally off the ball here. I could do because I do have 25 different flavors of this, watermelon, banana, and blood orange, and cherry, and God knows what else. What I'm actually gonna do is do a mango hurricane instead because mango is familiar, familiar to people. People love mango and it's quite easy to get. And you could use a, a thicker mango juice or a mango, uh, what would you get in the US? I forget what you kind of call it now. We have juice, uh, mental block, nectar. That's the word I'm looking for. I was about to Google and it kind of hit me. I was thinking apricot, apricot got me to nectar. So you might use a uh, mango nectar or something like that. But as I mentioned, you know, apricot might be a good one. But I'm so, I'm, I just think a mango hurricane is something a little bit different to put on your menus, not too far off the wall, but still would taste delicious. Now, now you could shake this cocktail, but I'm going to flash blend it. So we're going to start off with 60 mil of our dark rum of choice, 30 mil of our freshly squeezed lemon juice, just a tiny little drizzle of our grenadine, about five, seven and a half mil. And then I'm using 30 mil of this mango puree, which is 30% mango. Sorry, 50% mango, 50% sugar. 
Gonna add a good scoop of crushed ice. There's just a five, six, seven seconds on our spindle blender. There's just an open gated pour into our hurricane glass, or in my case, a pina colada glass. Crown with more crushed ice. And then you know me, big advocate for mint and a big advocate of dried fruit or, or dehydrated fruit as well. That is really tasty. I, I love the mango. I'm a big mango fan. And I'm a big tropical fruit fan. I like mango, papaya, passion fruit, all those kind of flavours. Tropical exotic fruit juices. I love those. That would be a great shout in there, wouldn't it? If you're in the UK, we can get those at most supermarkets. Sell it. Exotic juice, tropical juice. But just that one simple swap with your mango puree just works a treat. Completely different taste. Completely different item on a cocktail menu. Keeps your guests guessing and intrigued. No way that's not going to sell. Now, before we dive into the next four recipes, I want some feedback and some interaction from you guys. In the comments below, I want you to take a famous rum cocktail and I want you to swap one ingredient. I'm not talking about the rum unless we're going for a flavoured rum, for, of, for instance. You can do that. But let me know what riffs you would do. One simple ingredient swap, and I'm not talking about merely swapping a Barbados rum for a Jamaican rum. Now, for your second recipe, I'm going to attack the daiquiri. Now, I did toy about putting this in this video because even though it is my favourite cocktail, it is, for me, the gateway to all rum and rum cocktails. The daiquiri is just this mystical, amazing drink. Three simple ingredients, your rum, your lime, uh, your lime and your sugar. Still, it's not that big of a deal outside bartender world. And I really do want to change that. The, the daiquiri for me is phenomenal. So I'm going to serve it up slightly differently because I think a lot of people might actually be put off by the size of a Nick and Nora glass and won't actually order a daiquiri because of that. So we are going to sl serve it up slightly different. And I am going to do the swap. So I'm going to get rid of my plain sugar and... Regulars will be no shock, you know, this won't be a shock to you, but I absolutely adore this. Guava daiquiris are my favourite thing by a million, million miles. But what I've found is that actually combining it with, so this is, um, if you haven't seen this one before, this is a two rum blend, well, it's actually a three rum blend. Uh, we've got unaged Jamaican, uh, unaged Martinique, Anglicole in there, and a, a three-year-old Jamaican in there. So we've got lovely funk, and we've got this sort of agricole sugar cane juice going on, which I think works superbly well with the, the guava. It's the same way that I get this similar vibe, different but similar, if those of you can relate what I'm doing, to a couple of the British scratch rums with their funk, with their sort of sugar cane juice kind of vibe going on, like Goldstone there, uh, Dropworks, another one. I adore the guava. Now, if you can't haven't got a hold of this, and the other thing, what I was actually going to do for this video, completely forgot, in the UK, we can get Rubicon as guava. Now, for me, all I would do is like a 50-50 blend of that and your sugar syrup to create a guava syrup. But this stuff, we can quite easily buy all around Europe. This is absolutely phenomenal. But if you want to make your own guava syrup, for example, go for your life. But I promise you, try a guava daiquiri. And daiquiris, as I say, are all about finding your perfect ratio. So I'm going to start off with 50 ml of my rum, 20 ml of lime juice, and then 15 ml of this guava syrup. And this smells stunning. <laughs> Add plenty of ice. And I think this works as well. It's rough and ready and open gated pour and no need to uh, find strain. So we're just going to dump that into a glass. Crown it with a bit of crushed ice. And if you're lucky enough to have fresh guava, garnish with that. But I've just got a dried lime and a sprig of mint. Oh, my word. Every time I make this, I'm just like, wow. It, it's just, I don't know what it is for me, but guava with cane juice, with Jamaican funk, just works so, so well. And we all know the daiquiri is all about, you know, the lime and the sugar, the sweetness brings out like flavours and rum. It's a classic cocktail. Obviously, 
you, we know all we all know the strawberry daiquiri, the mango daiquiri, banana daiquiris, and stuff like that. But just for something a bit out there, guava daiquiris. Oh my god! Honestly, again, stick that on a cocktail menu instead of daiquiri, and it will just fly. Now, for your third recipe, we're going for the Queen's Park Swizzle. Now, I would like to start a little bit of a movement about this drink because I really rate it. And up there with the julep, actually, I'm preferring these two kinds of mint-based drinks to the mojito these days. I really do love this. Now, this would be your standard Queen's Park Swizzle. Caveat, it would be Angostura, um, Angostura rum because they have sort of taken ownership of the cocktail and obviously the Queen's Park Hotel is in Trinidad. So we would use that. It's tucked away there. I had to move this to get that. And I was thinking, oh, actually, do you know what? I might actually use this. So your standard ingredients for the Queen's Park Swizzle, your rum, uh, Demerara sugar, lime juice, Angosturas, and mint leaves. So the swap for this cocktail is going to be the Demerara sugar. Uh, let's just leave the mint there. So what I'm actually going to do, thinking about what would work and what flavors I actually like, I'm going for pineapple. I'm going to use a pineapple puree, pineapple syrup. Monin would probably work just as well for this, but this is a blend of 50% fruit, 50% sugar. So we're on the similar lines as the mango, the funkin' passion fruit that I did earlier, 50-50 kind of thing. So I'm just going to do a simple swap from Demerara to pineapple puree. So to start, this is made in the glass and you kind of want a swizzle stick. So I'm starting with the swizzle stick in the glass because we're going to be adding crushed ice. But the first ingredient is mint, 10 to 12 mint leaves, palm your hand, give it a spank, and then we're just going to pop those into the glass. Next, we're going for our 30 ml of freshly squeezed lime juice. Then I'm just going to balance adjust this. I'm going for 20 ml of this ODK uh, pineapple puree, as I said, 50% fruit, 50% sugar. Now I'm just going to add some crushed ice. And actually, I'm going to add my 60 ml of rum. And adding that rum now just makes it easier to swizzle. So we're just going to give it a good swizzle. Add more crushed ice. Another swizzle. Then we're just going to crown it with more crushed ice. And the beauty of this drink is it calls for a lot of Angostura bitters. Five to eight dashes, depending on your palate. And then to garnish, more mint. And then I've just got a dried pineapple as well. And this is everything I hoped for and more. That just, that pineapple just opens the door to anything passion fruit is 100% going to work in there. Mango is going to work in there. Do you know what? Even that kind of vibe that I'm getting, blood orange. Blood orange might go quite well in there as well. But, you know, oh, it's so easy to do that one simple swap. But crazy, amazing, you know, amazing results. Love this drink. Now for your fourth recipe, I couldn't not do a Mai Tai, really, could I, in a rum cocktail video. And I did toy about not doing it again because it's a, it's a cocktail that I've covered a lot on, <laughs> very, on all of my channels, to be fair. Um, but it was just something about it. And I have got something new to bring to the party in here as well. What I was going to do was either a banana. Well, I wasn't going to do a banana. Banana would have been the obvious one. Uh, was going down the whole apricot route because I do love the apricot and the almond vibe in this. So to run you through the standard ingredients, I've got my rum blend there. Focus on your rum blend. Whatever Mai Tai rum blend you do, use that. But this is my rum blend. Um, standard recipe would be your Pierre Ferrand dry orange curacao or insert another orange uh, liqueur there. Uh, Demerara sugar, uh, orgeat syrup and some lime juice. Now my swap, there are various ways you could do this, but I wanted to get as much flavour as I could in the ratios that I had available, if that makes sense. So I've decided to swap the Pierre Fronde dry orange curacao. Now, again, this would be your, where your, you know, what I've got it, I've got it ready to go there, the apricot. That's what I was going to do. However, earlier this week, I did receive a care package from Master of Malt. 
and I it's it's a product I've had many times before and I absolutely love it and adore it. So I'm actually going, and this should be available across Europe. It's definitely available across the UK, uh, available across Europe. It's a French brand. Um, and I've got a funny feeling I have seen this on various US uh, social media posts as well. So this is a nectarine liqueur. For those of you who don't know what nectarine is, um, it's, it's a smooth... I don't really liken it to a peach. People generically call it a smooth peach. You know where a peach has rough and ready kind of um, skin to it. The, the nectarine is smooth like a mango. I actually, even though it's not and not the same family, I, I don't think it's the same family, I do interpret this more in a mango kind of situation than I do a peach. But I adore nectarines. Nectarines are genuinely my favourite fruit when they're ripe. When they're not ripe, they're horrible. But when they're ripe, they're absolutely delicious. So I'm going to do, I am going to balance adjust, but I'm going for a nectarine Mai Tai. So start with the lime, 22 and a half mil freshly squeezed lime juice, seven and a half mil of my Orgeat syrup. Now, instead of seven and a half mil of Demerara, I'm gonna bring it down slightly. I've got literally about four mil there, just under the five mil mark. Because then what I wanna do, instead of 15 mil of nectarine, I'm gonna take this up to 22 and a half mil. And then it's just 60 mil of your rum blend. So I'm going for 30 mil of my Worthy Park Select and 30 mil of my Worthy 109. This is shaken with crushed ice. And we shake it with crushed ice just purely to give it that little bit of extra dilution. And shake and dump into your favorite Mai Tai glass. Crown with more crushed ice. And then why break a habit of a lifetime? Mint to garnish, which it should be, and the lime. And traditionally it is an upside down lime husk, a lime shell, because if you don't know the story, the mint replicates a palm tree and the, um, the upside down lime shell replicates a tropical island. Now I think I proclaimed recently, don't ask me which video, because I've made flipping loads of them, that I would potentially never go back to making a normal Mai Tai again after I did the apricot Mai Tai. And I stand by that because this is gorgeous. It helps that I love nectarine. It really does. But wow, does that shine through. I just think, especially the apricot and banana is another one as well. But I just think those, those fruity notes really do shine through, really do complement the cocktail for me. And as I say, you know, I love my tropical fruits. I think they complement the cocktail a lot better than what the orange does. You have to remember, like back in those days, you didn't have those sort of liqueurs. Like you had an orange liqueur, but you didn't have like to the abundance of what we've got now. I might have done an apricot. I'm not even convinced you would have had an apricot liqueur, to be fair. In the 30s? I'm not, I'm not 100% sure on that. But there's another question for you. If you can trace apricot liqueur or peach liqueur back to like the 1930s, 1940s, 1944 obviously, if you can trace it back to then, let me know. But this is stunning. Your your favourite tropical mango passion fruit again, I oh, I don't know. Yeah, they'll work. This is, this is amazing. I love this. Now for your fifth and final riff, we are not going to make a painkiller. Of course we're not. We are going to make a passion fruit version of it. So your traditional painkiller, if you were going to make that, would be um, your your pus's gunpowder proof or pus's gunpowder proof spice. Nothing wrong with that rum. I just wanted to be do something different. Uh, so I'm going for plantation OFTD because this is not a painkiller. We've got our coconut, which is standard, and we've got pineapple juice and orange juice. So my simple one ingredient swap for there. I'm keeping the rum, I'm keeping the coconut, I'm keeping the passion, uh, the pineapple, and I'm gonna swap in, or if you wanted to, I might actually do it with that. I might give it a road test with that. Either a passion fruit puree uh, or passion fruit juice instead of the orange juice. So as this is a very strong rum, we're going for 45 mil, one and a half ounces, plantation OFTD. Then going for 30 mil of my passion fruit, uh, passion fruit, sorry, my cocoa, it's cream of coconut, coconut puree. Now I'm gonna go with the passion fruit syrup, 
But instead of the full measure, I'm going to cut it back slightly. So I'm going for 20 ml of the passion fruit puree. This is light and tart, so it won't be too sweet. Then I'm going for 45 ml of this 100% pressed pineapple juice. Good scoop of crushed ice. And it's a flash blend for about five, six seconds on my spindle blender. Then open gated pour into your favorite glass. A little bit of grated nutmeg on top. Then I'm going to go crazy this time. Instead of a sprig of mint, a couple of pineapple fronds and a dried orange. Wow, that is super good. I have made this before in a video two years ago, probably at the time of, uh, time of shooting. Definitely not in the last 18 months I know of. I remember thinking then, wow, that's good. Massively prefer the passion fruit to the orange in that. And of course, this isn't a painkiller, so you can kind of do what you want. Oh, that is really, really good. The passion fruit and the pineapple, the rum, the coconut just comes through there. So tasty. So there we go. There's my five uh, rum cocktails with one simple ingredient swap. I hope you've had your thinking caps on. Remember to dive in the comments. Let me know what rum cocktails you would attack and what would be the swap the one single ingredient swap remember i'm not talking about the rum unless you're going flavored rum so let us know in the comments below my favorite i'll always love the uh the guava daiquiri always i mean that's a standard but you know what it's a very tough call a very very tough call i'd probably slightly lean towards the nectarine Mai Tai. 